Hey guys, welcome back to some more Banjo Kazooie. Let's just get this one out of the way. Let, let's just go to everyone's least favorite world, the other water world. The 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 bad one. The really bad one. The most the intense. One with, bad one. The one with the lines for the for the uh, water slide are ridiculous. Oh, it's a different water world altogether. No, that one's not that bad. It's just the people are rude. The the water world, you know, the, the horrible movie, the the really horrible movie, uh, <laughs> that that is a lot of largely considered one of the worst movies ever made. Oh, I no, mean, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Have you seen the Australian horror movie Bait? Uh, About the flooded center with a shark in it. I'm not gonna get baity into watching bad movies. I'm good. <laughs> ha ha ha. So there's a there's a there's a reason why this uh but we haven't we got unlocked the level yet I'll wait until we get an unlocked the level but there's another nickname for this level that a lot of people is tend to give it <laughs> Is it going to get us to monetize? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what doesn't get you to monetize nowadays with the weird system? I've seen weirder things. I mean, considering some of the levels people go to sense to do censorship on their channels it's amazing the links some people go to and then some other people just go viewer discretion is advised from this point onwards content is not suitable for minors you have been warned do not complain or report based on censorship <laughs> wow there are, literally one youtuber i follow literally has an advisory warning a minute and a half into every one of his videos takes all of the sensor filtering and bleeping off and it's fine because it's in the video saying viewer discretion is advised from this point onwards. I mean, that's fair, but even then, it, YouTube's auto system doesn't give a crap. I've had it flag just rated E games as not appropriate and just delete the videos for no good reason. I mean, heck, Cat Icarus, because he had the word baby in the, t one, the title of one of his reviews, he had it, um, YouTube's automatic system relabeled it as suitable for minors. Yeah, which kind of destroys all interaction on a video. The title of the video was uh, PlayStation Games for Babies. And I'm like, oh no. The good thing I didn't put the word Kermit in the video I uploaded last week. It would have doomed me. It would have doomed me. And speaking of doom, welcome to Rusty Bucket Bay. This, this is probably the least favorite world of everyone. But honestly, this world isn't that bad, especially in this version. Because this version fixes the major issue this world had with the notes, so it's a little more doable. But it's still a really difficult world. It's not my least favorite because this, honestly, I don't find as hard as the next world, and we'll get into why when we get there. But also, I've played this game since 98, so I'm more used to it now. Well, that was effortlessly broken open. I, I like to call this 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 place Rusty Fuck It Bay. <laughs> How I feel after I play this level. Yeah, it's a really difficult level, and it likes to kind of kick you when you're down. So I don't blame you. Ugh. We live in an age now where you could easily put the Fall Guys music over the top of this, and it would fit. And you know, half the people wouldn't make the first jump. Yeah. It's the sad truth. Right here, the engine room is by far the hardest room, at least for platforming. In the entire game for me, I hate this room so much. Well, the biggest problem this room has platforming wise is all the rotating pipes. They have very weird collision on them, so you could be slightly on a slant on it and you would just fall. Another thing is bad is the camera in this area because it's kind of hard to judge when you can jump through these moving blades. Mm hmm. And depending where the camera is, that can make it easier or harder. But uh, this right here, what Lester's about ready to do, once he hits that switch, a timer will activate. He has to move out of the engine room and all the way over to the the, the back end of the ship and go into rotating blades to get that jiggy. And it's only 60 seconds. This is by far the hardest jiggy in the game, at least in my opinion. Yeah, it is probably one of the worst for this reason. And there's another gimmick we'll get into in a minute why this is also bad. So you, you kind of want to set yourself up for this one to basically be ready to go after you hit that second switch. So you have as much time as possible to get the jiggy. And if you don't know where you're going, this also makes it worse. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this was definitely the one I was thinking about as being the, the, the 
harshest timer. Yeah, this is probably the harshest timer based Jiggy in the whole game. I've done it before where I've had actually made the mistake and went the opposite direction thinking that's the back of the ship. Yeah, I think everyone's done that at one point because I've done that too. <sighs> this is where it's at. And this gimmick here we're getting to now is another reason why this is bad. Uh, you have less air to work with here because this is poison water, so you can stay underwater for half the amount of time you used to. So you gotta get booking it. So uh, I'll, uh, clutch your clutch your buttholes. We're gonna be down here for a little bit. It's gonna be tight. And you, you use oxygen when you're still sitting there on the water itself. Yep, you don't regain your air until you're actually out of the water entirely. It is very nerve-wracking. Of course you got the engine room jiggy the first time. Yeah, you always want to go for that jiggy immediately, because if you screw up, especially if you're on N64, then you just do it again. It's not that big of a deal, and you can re-collect those few notes. And this version is not as punishing, because you don't have to worry about the notes anymore. Yep. But it's still really difficult if you're not knowing where to go or what you're doing. This Jiggy itself is the reason why you play 360 version, really. Yeah. These pipes are so awkward to platform on. So tiny. I will never get over how overly cartoonishly dramatic the 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 ground hits are for for those slugs coming out of the walls when everything just shakes. <laughs> it's one of my favorite death animations in any game. It's just so goofy. I mean, heck, I loved when they did it in Sword and Shield. Now, there are a bunch of like holes around the areas of of uh, Rusty Bucket Bay where you have to fire your eggs inside the toll booth and where you want to go you want to go on the I think right side first before you go on the left side well there are certain tolls that are a little bit hard to get to so yeah this is the one you kind of need to come over from the boat side and just climb your way over from this mechanism so the toll 8 here is kind of one of the harder ones to get to for that reason. Yeah, because one, one end is blocked though, because the toll's on the other side. And the yeah. one where you usually go in. Yeah, this one has toll 8 and toll 6 on the same island, so you can't really get over the way Jinjo is unless you kind of come from the boat side. Yeah. And uh, I think, did you did you release the TNT to break the thing on the boat? Yeah, we just broke that. So we'll, we'll be going back into that area later in this level. I'll probably one of our later things we'll take care of. Because I'm going to try to make like a full circle on the outside and then go back to the ship. Also, got to be really careful here because these are very thin platforms. There's always so much to do on this level. It's always really tricky to like make a mental map of what is the most efficient route for everything. So... Props to you for managing to narrow it down to 1 to 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, how I always record stuff for this channel anyways is I route things out ahead of time and then record it. And this kind of level especially shows that because of how much back and forth there can be in Rusty Bucket. And how much death is here too kind of makes it so that you kind of want to have a nice tight route. Yeah. Mm. And that's why, like, with collectathons and stuff like that, especially, like, <laughs> you collect a thon like this, like... I'm kind of glad you're doing it, Lester, because you route things better than a lot of us do. It, it also helps nowadays that the speedrun scene has come a very far away, and they have way better practice tools. There's actually a practice run for this game. It makes it a lot easier for you just to jump on a level and just kind of do what you need to to kind of learn things, and that really helped rounding out things. It didn't help it was on N64, so kind of had to play a different version to round out things. That was a little weird to flip-flop between control schemes. But it made at least routing out like jiggies and all the notes a little bit easier. Well, there's that at least. This stuff will just straight up kill you, so be careful. Well, it won't kill you, it would do damage. So, at least it's a little more forgiving on that regard. I killed you, my bad. Those TNT boxes are weird too, because as you see, I shot it, it didn't care, and then it ran into me anyways. They have to be actively coming at you for them to die. 
I usually just use the golden feathers on the TNT guys. Yeah, you can also use blue eggs, but again, it's a little more risky because they have to be charging at you for them to actually take damage. Hmm, that's that is true. But there is actually one enemy in particular we're running into later that is actually really good to use blue eggs on, and we'll see. But for now, this is actually probably the tightest time jiggy in the whole game, because if you make one tiny little mistake, then you fail. It's not as punishing as the other time-based jiggy in this level, because you don't die if you fail. Unlike that jiggy. Yeah. But it's extremely strict on the time. Like, you see when I collect it, I only had like a second left. And I was moving super fast. Yeah, I still think that the Pyramid and Gilby's Valley one is the, the worst time-based one. Yeah, because again, you barely have any time left when you get in there. I've tried it so much, go as fast as I can on that jiggy, and I've literally gotten to the point where I'm, I go really fast, and I still get the door shut on me right in my face when I'm coming back. Yeah. By the way, Snackers, I don't know if we mentioned that, if we did this. Nope, we're going over there. I was going to say, in a minute... Snackers makes a return. Kind of. Yeah, I was about to say, he, he has a very small play room to work with. Yeah, Snackers in that little pin right there, he, uh, he will appear if you land in the water. But he doesn't talk to you, though. Unlike, you know, Treasure Joe Code. Oh, he does, but again, he's in a very small play area, so you don't actually see much of his dialogue in this one. Oh, okay. I thought he didn't talk. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, no, he talks in both levels he's featured in. It's just, again, you may not be in there long enough, so sometimes he may spawn without dialogue. Oh, we slowed those enemies. The guys in the pipes. They make the, they make the pig noises, the pig oink noise before they come out. I don't know why I always thought that was funny. I'm trapped. Help. Get this thing off of me. Yeah, this boat picked a very bad place to drop anchor. It's right on top of a dolphin. That's that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. He's crushing me to death. And he's a mammal. He needs to come up for air a little bit. Yeah. That's one of those fishes that can't breathe underwater. Good job, guys. He's not a fish! <laughs> yeah, don't worry. He won't be a fish for much longer. He just died. In theory. I mean, to be fair, I was very... The anchor literally went through him. Yeah, you would think he would be dead. But no, this dolphin apparently uh, anchor-proof. It can live with an anchor going straight through his body. No, 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 no. See, we were talking about Disney earlier, which means no one dies and there's no blood. Oh, yes. It's just googly eyes. Okay, and then I remembered we were talking about Lion King, and I'm like, oh, that was a hot take. <laughs> Brother, help me! Why do you do this? Did you want the distortion filter for bootleg Mufasa? <laughs> I mean, I think this one does a good enough job with distortion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Oh. See, he doesn't talk. Oh, he can. Just, you know, not immediately. This is one of those cases he just spawns without dialogue. Oh. He, can talk. he chooses not to. He's like the smart half of Twitter. Yeah, really. Because <laughs> I've had Snackers talk in this section before. I think it's more rare, but he, he does once in a while still have dialogue. It's just, it's so sudden that you just, a lot of times you just don't get anything. What would happen if Snackers had a, had, a, had a Twitter account? He'd be verified and he would never post anything. Probably. <laughs> He'd be one of those verified accounts that just knew the right connections to do nothing. He would be one of those accounts that, said that that just talks about coffee and mints all day. Yeah. yeah. But he won't have the coffee sponsorship, though. That'd be the problem. Okay, now you're just making him sound like some of the better Uber drivers I've had. <laughs> There's your one and only time you fly in Rusty Bucket. So, yeah, that 100 red feather upgrade was totally worth it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> what if you have a game with 12 feathers and you're very bad at flying controls? Then yes, that would actually kind of help. What if you forgot to restock? Then you enter the cheat code and you're restocked. I guess that's true. 
And that goes doubly, so if you disable the code and re-enter it, you get 100 feathers. So if you're low, just enter the code. We still have to we still have to go do the TNT, didn't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we're on our way to do that now. So uh don't blink. Enter this fight. Get ready with your blue eggs. And uh there you go, that's the boss fight skipped. What? what? Excuse me. So uh I actually did that, hoping it would work, and that's the first time I ever did the boss skip. If you can fire blue eggs before the cutscene starts, you actually activate the boss early, skipping his whole dialogue, and you can completely skip the fight too, because you could just grab the jiggy and leave. That is the one boss we're not fighting in this game. I'm still having a double take from Banjo on Xbox inbox. <laughs> 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 I just, I just, I, uh, you don't play games normally I, anymore, can you? Hey man, if you gotta go fast, you got things to do. I guess. You gotta, guess. Play to go. you gotta go to Rusty Bucket Bay. You seriously can't play games normally anymore. We're really not missing much for skipping that one fight. Literally, the best strategy to fight that guy is just Wonder Wing it, so you just stand there and just invincibility for like a minute. It That's the whole fight. I mean, if it cuts two minutes of footage out, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah, but I just... This is just how he is. He can't play... He can't play games normally anymore. He just... He has to play... it. Like, say, I gotta skip this. No one, I don't have time for this. I know, we have to wrap up this video quick, because I want to learn how to do Moon Warp 3, Majora's Mask. Gotta Moon Warp again. <laughs> the man's got 20 plus years under his belt of video games. This is like, let's spice it up a little bit. I know, I'm just not giving him cred, because it's like every playthrough that we've seen, he, he, he always says like, oh, I got, you know, I, I just do this, 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 and now I'm slight. I mean... I'm guilty of breaking games too. <laughs> well, that's uh, that lined up perfectly, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, really... if you know where to stand, then that's just perfect. Uh, that, yeah, that was just, hmm. like never mind skips or <laughs> saving time. That was just aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I always like it when you can get a jiggy cutscene starting in the middle of the jiggy spawning cutscene because that that's also a thing you do in the speed run because that does save time and frames. Yeah. So you're one of those save the frames to kill the animals guys. I mean, the animals don't do anything to help you in Super Metroid, but in Fusion, they're good. But you'd just be breaking the canonical canon of the game by just not saving a bluster. To be fair, what's, what's canonical lore in these games anymore? What's a moon in Sonic? I don't even know what that even is. They don't know what it is half the time. Okay, okay, the moon... Okay. <laughs> nice camera. You know, I have a theory, okay, of why the moon came back from back in the future games. Okay, they used the Chaos Emeralds to wish it back. There. And that Dragon Balls. That's right. Okay. And uh, Archie Comics says other. I had this conversation with someone about Dragon Ball Z the other day, and it like hilariously, the moon comes back between the Cell games and the Boo Saga, and the assumption is just that at some point the Dragon Balls were gathered and someone just wished them back. I mean, with a seven-year time gap and the fact that you actually can do that, it makes sense. Yeah. In Sonic's case, that just kind of happens. But I on mean, the you know, end, going back to Sonic, um, uh, Raukas playing through all of the Sonic games canonically at the moment, and he's just got up to Sonic Battle, and he's like, oh, okay, so Shadow's alive. And I'm like, oh, we have to explain to Raukau now that you, we've got heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, and Sonic Battle. And Sonic Battle came out first. But Sh uh, heroes and Shadow happened before Sonic Battle's plot. Oh. Oh, we do have to explain that, don't we? Mm. <laughs> this is awkward. Yeah, what's continuity? But he's enjoying it because he's like he's he said that a Merle looks like a metabot. Not wrong. Yeah. He's, he's not wrong. But yeah, nah. 
Like, the fact that he's playing through it and he's just like, it's a bit derivative, but I can understand why this game has a right to exist. And I'm like, thank you, you wholesome Canadian man. I mean, the single player is very repetitive, but the game itself is very fun. I mean, it's got so many good one-liners in it. Like, never before will I not think of a robot saying in a Knuckles voice, yeah, let's blow this taco stand. Like, one of my favorite quotes in the whole Sonic canon, other than I thought your middle name was The. <laughs> yeah, never mind the fact that Knuckles doesn't realize that would mean his middle name is The as well. <laughs> never mind that. I mean, this is Knuckles for you. He doesn't even know what the heck his Knuckles are. That's the worst part about that, Knuckles. You know, I've actually kind of grown to like... I've kind of grown to like uh, Boom's portrayal of Knuckles. I don't hate it as much as I initially did. He's, he's fine. The design's a little bit different, but honestly, it makes more sense for the kind of character he is. It's just... The stupid dumb head. Knuckles is a little weird to get used to, but it's also kind of canon in the classic games. Just a little... Exceptified. To be fair, it's not it's not too far apart from his source material. I mean, if you think, oh, okay, great. So we're in Rayman now. Yeah, basically, yeah. So we get super helicopter this level, right? If only. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, actually, you're you're not that far off with the transformations power. Okay, okay I was mm, I was just joking, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So couple things just to really go over there real quick we got our final cheeto cheat there's no more after this but we're peeking into where we go for the next world because we actually need to be here to unlock the way to even open it this is the only time in the game where you need to find a switch to activate the jiggy puzzle to open up a world they never do this again and it's right next to the entryway of click clock wood so that little entryway we saw all the way back in Treasure Trove Cove, we now finally activated the Jiggy Puzzle piece to actually do that Jiggy Puzzle. And this is why they put this warp pot here, if it would wake up. Thank you. <laughs> they specifically put this one here that links back to the Treasure Trove in Clanker's Cavern area because of this weird puzzle situation. They could just warp back to the beginning of the manor and then just do your puzzle. I'll be honest, la the last time I did play Banjo-Kazooie, I did not realize that that cauldron was there, so I did the rest of the trip back on foot. Oh man, that's harsh. Even at that point, I would save and quit. Well, Marley, I did it too, so don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that that cauldron's there. We've already talked to that bird and Tilda, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, that one's already done. There's only one more bird and to talk to, and it's actually next to Click Lock. Yeah, this is our final world in the game that we just unlocked. How did we do Rusty Bucket Bay and all one? This video is not even 30 minutes long. What the heck, man? Yeah. And when you, and you know what you're doing and you get a boss skip accidentally, then yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah. In I hear before all that shit about not playing games properly anymore. In before you can make Rusty Bucket Bay look less intimidating than the Sanctuary of Stone and Fire in Rayman 2. <laughs> what the beans? <laughs> so our final cheat here, gold feathers are entering this, as it implies, is for your gold feathers. We're doubling that from our base 10 to 20. In my opinion, probably the most useful one, because gold feathers are so hard to find in this game. So this is very useful to me. I just kind of wish we got it sooner. Uh, remind me, even though you got AG to tell you about gold feathers, could you have come in there and typed it in without reading that? No, that's the trigger to actually use the cheat. You need to learn it from Cheeto for it to work. You can enter a Cheeto cheat in whenever you want, but those cheats you have to be careful because the 360 version saving will be disabled. And in the N64 version, if you enter too many Cheeto cheats, Grunty will delete your save. So you have to be very careful what cheats you use in this game. 